Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's Combustion oh, webinar. Hi, and it's my great pleasure today to introduce Professor Antonio Garcia, who is uh, today's speaker. Uh, professor Antonio Gar Garcia is an associate professor in the Department of Thermal and Reciprocating Engines at the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, where he develops his teaching responsibilities in the framework of combustion fundamentals. And during the last few years, his research activities have been focused on low temperature combustion topics, in particular, an extensive research work on the use of high efficiency premise combustion strategy with dual fuels of different auto ignition characteristics in CI engines. And this effort had led to the publication of more than 90 peer reviewed journal articles. And Professor Garcia is an active member of ICE where he serves as session organizer, reviewer, and author at different events. Uh, Professor Garcia received his master and a PhD in mechanical engineering from the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia. And Professor Garcia has been a visiting professor at the combustion engine division at Lund University, as well as a visiting researcher at RWTH Arkansas University. Uh, in addition, Professor Antonio Garcia is editor in chief of Results in Engineering Journal, uh, Transportation in Engineering Journal, and part of the advisory board of Applied Servo Engineering and Progress in Energy and Combustion Science Journals. So with that, I would like to uh, welcome Professor Garcia and uh, the podium is yours. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for your kind presentation. So I'd like to Say thank you uh, also to you for for inviting me on on this uh, on this uh, really interesting webinars and uh, as you have also mentioned so today I will uh, I will talk about uh, the issues like a pathway for achieving uh, 2030 CO2 horizon. So I assume that uh, you are seeing correctly my my screen. So uh, with that. Uh, the outline of the presentation that I'm going to, to provide today, it's split in, in four different parts. The first one, I'm going to talk about uh, what implies uh, the, the carbon neutrality in the European Union in 2050. So in a second way, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, which could be a suitable issue for working on internal combustion engines and then try to help with that uh, carbon neutrality. And uh, uh, the third point and not next uh, will be how to develop a real application by using a specific or particular e-fuel that in this case is going to be OMX. So with that, I will close uh, the, the, the presentation and I will be delighted to, to try to answer your, your questions. So well, starting with uh, what, what the first part of what, uh, which are the implications that uh, we have in order to get uh, carbon neutrality in the European Union. So let me say that well, which are the recent movements that the European Union have been making in uh, 2019, so it appears to be in deal. So in this green deal, uh, it's clear, the clear message is that non-net emissions of greenhouse gases in 2050 can be attained. So around uh, mid-2020 appears on a strong group of actors that are talking about what is going to be Euro 7 in a serious way. So, and the, 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 the clear idea, the key point there is the, uh, it's needed to be accelerated, a kind of shift uh, to a more sustainable and smart mobility. And finally, in uh, past July, in July 2021, appears fit for 55. This fit for 55, so it's uh, claiming for at least a 55% emission reduction in, uh, in 2030. And uh, the idea of uh, all new cars registered on 2035 uh, will be zero tailpipe emissions. So this means that they are claiming for battery electrical vehicles or hydrogen or ammonia. So in fact, this is not necessarily mean that uh, an end of internal combustion engine. So the thing is that they are claiming for a cleaner uh, type of uh, mobility and then the idea is to try to evaluate how internal combustion engines can be cleaner than electrical vehicles if possible. So continuing, 
so in terms of uh, the type of uh, of uh, of a scenario that, uh, that 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 we can see uh well it's it's kind of politics um ambiated politics uh, in fit for 55 so we could this describe which is the real scenario how european union sees and how actually it is so from one side from the european union side so or commission in terms of of, of procuring this fit for 55 or other regulations. So they are considering only tank to wheel uh, CO2. I mean, only the CO2 that is going out from, from, our, from, from, from our cars in terms of the tile pipe emission that we are getting or providing. So, and then they, they promote the uh, third emissions technology in terms of hydrogen or in terms of battery electrical vehicles, because for sure, in terms of tank to wheel, they are not procuring any type of, of emission of CO2. Yeah, but the idea it's uh, yeah in order to create those fuels or even the electricity, so we need to take into account that uh, the well to tank needs to be considered. So I mean the CO two that we are going to use in order to generate, so not only that that fuel but also that that electricity. So what is uh, the European Union uh, thinking or doing? So they are just sifting uh, the uh, CO two problems upstream, but. Uh, the main idea that is needed to be transferred to the people is that CO2 uh, or to the public is that CO2 it's a global problem. So it's not a local problem. So this means that this type of regulations that are going to be just focused on uh, local CO2, they make no sense. So yeah, so asking about, uh, asking about how much CO2 we are going to, to procure. So this is the idea of, of CO2 upstream. So we could also say that there is not zero CO2 technology. So all technology is going to procure or is going to produce some type of CO2. So later we need to try to quantify which is best, which is worst. So with that in mind, and uh, continuing with this, this idea of, of tank to wheel or well to wheel, so how the e-fuels can contribute to this type of decarbonization based on well to wheel approach. Yeah, well, considering well to wheel, approach, I mean, just adding tank to wheel and well to tank, the thing that we could say is that ambient CO2 can be captured as raw material to produce fuel. So uh, we can create hydrogen in terms of uh, using or uh, just based on, 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 on clean energies uh, or in clean uh, sources uh, using renewable energies. And later we can try to post-process and to try to obtain a liquid fuel that can be synthesized and distributed using the current infrastructure. So uh, this means that also we can try to manage to have a uh, fuel composition that needs to be or can be controlled. So this is the main idea of, of an e-fuel and the uh, main concept. So yeah, which is the real scenario for the transport decarbonization, decarbonization among 2030, 2050. So, yeah, which are the solutions in order to achieve that carbon neutrality? So in the image, the thing that I'm showing is the temporal evolution of the CO2 emissions for European passenger cars in megatons of CO2. So in gray color, the thing in solid gray color, you can see the historical series. And later we have dusted gray color line as well as uh, blue light dusted line. So this is the blue one is for European Green Deal and uh, the dusted gray line is for 2030 regulations. So, and then you can realize that, uh, well, so what, which is, uh, uh, what we are considering like carbon neutrality. So we are considering carbon neutrality, looking at uh, European uh, regulations, something like having 90% reduction in the CO2 production, the CO2 footprint, sorry. So this means that we need to reduce kind of 3.7. So among 2030, just considering 2030 or considering uh, how to say 2050 and depending on the type of uh, reduction that we are procuring or that we are cloning. So we need to reduce huge amount of CO2. So this is the target of reduction that we have right now considering where we are. So this 3.7 gigatons of, of CO2. So how we can reduce it or how we can in terms of transportation for sure. So what, uh, which is the, the best way in order to reduce. So one scenario could be 
uh, something that is, is, is planned. So in, in Europe, it's, it's tried to ban internal combustion engines around 2035, depending on the, the area, depending on the region. Spain has different criteria like Germany or, whatever, or, or other countries. So this means that we are going to have internal combustion engines in a very reduced amount. And later, so the biggest part uh, is going to be filled with electrical vehicles. So, but there are other scenarios. So for instance, the scenario number two that I, I, I highlight here, which we are going to use, or we can use low carbon intensity fuels, and we can improve the vehicle efficiency in uh, 0.3 uh, gigatons of CO2. And later, so we could have kind of around 30% of, of, of electrical vehicles and around 70% of internal combustion engines. So it means that low carbon and renewable fuels can be a more direct solution with uh, low infrastructure requirements. So that is probably one of the biggest points in Europe in terms of having an implementation of the electrical vehicle. The infrastructure needs to be uh, to increase, needs to be increased in something like uh, 20 times depending on the country, even 40 times. Well, something that appears here is like a quite recurrent uh, question. So when, when we are talking about this, so uh, it's uh, what is more efficient to use uh, the electricity in order to be used directly in a an, in an battery electrical vehicle or to produce, uh, to produce an e-fuel or later using the internal combustion engine. Yeah, this is, this is one question that appears normally when we have this type of discussions. So uh, let me check or let me say that, uh, well, we can try to compute which are the efficiency losses in the reference, uh, in the reference scenarios by value chain compared with the conventional view. So this means that in this graph of the left, the thing that we have is the losses per value change stage and resulting total mobility efficiency. So uh, we can say we can see in the left hand side. So internal combustion engine vehicle on the right hand side. So we can see battery electrical vehicle. So in both cases, the idea should be to use uh, electricity that is coming from Germany in order to create uh, an e-fuel or directly to use uh, for uh, feeding an electrical vehicle. So if we do that and we compare the blue color, red color, we could say that the total efficiency of the mobility concept for sure in this case. So we could say that if only the powertrain losses are considered, the battery electrical vehicle is superior powertrain in terms of energy yield. So we are comparing something like 70% versus 13%. Yeah, but the idea is what happens if the location of the energy generation is considered? So it's kind of an holistic approach. So here we have the uh, uh, world, in the map, world map, sorry. And we have the uh, full load hours and efficiency score in percentage but by each one of the regions. So I have uh, marked, I have made a zoom. So for Morocco, for Algeria. So, and also here we have also Germany again. So if we compare, uh, which is the efficiency that we have for uh, PV or for uh, wine or for something that is combining. So wind and PV, we could say that yeah, comparing Algeria or Morocco uh, versus uh, Germany. So we are comparing something like 39 versus 94 uh, efficiency, 32 versus 55, 56, sorry, uh, percentage of energy in terms of efficiency for the wind and something that is a combination of 75 versus 35. So this means that in average, depending on the type of, of the, uh, renewable fuel, the renewable energy that we are using, so we are going to have an increase of efficiency comparing uh, the generation of this PV electricity in Germany that is three times less than the ones that are using or obtaining this same PV, uh, but for instance, in Algeria. So the idea is what's happening if we use this electricity that is coming from Algeria in order to create an e-fuel that later is going to be transported and is going to be used in Germany. So with this holistic approach, the thing that we can say, so just taking a look in the same type of figures that I have shown before, is that, well, the internal combustion engine uh, vehicle using uh, the um, e-fuel that it's made in Morocco with uh, the electricity that is uh, made in Morocco by using PV, it's almost in the same range of efficiency that the ones that 
if we use directly the PV uh, electricity that is generated in Germany, and then we fit an electrical vehicle. So this means that this idea of uh, an holistic approach, it's absolutely relevant when we are comparing things that are not uh, tank to wheel and they are well to wheel. Or let me say we need to create this concept of LCA in order to be applied to uh, the different regulations that later are going to impose different type of uh, transport uh, for the people who is going to be used in Europe. Okay, so well, this is this is kind of of introduction, and uh, well, the idea is uh, okay. We have we have seen that the fields make sense, and then which could be a suitable e field for uh, being used in uh, internal combustion engines. Well, so this part of, of the left-hand side, so it's something that I have, I have, have shown in the concept of EPA fuel. So in fact, it's the, the green hydrogen or the blue hydrogen production. So, and then we have hydrogen, we have CO2. So it, it can be uh, direct, uh, direct capture or uh, by, by other means. Uh, so, but the, in the end we have hydrogen, we have CO2. So, and uh, with this hydrogen and CO2, so we can, uh, depending on the process, so by using direct methanol synthesis or a reverse water gas sieve, we can obtain methanol. So then from methanol to a mix, methanol to uh, gasoline, or we can uh, directly uh, obtain singles and then fissure drops. So uh, just taking a look here on the right-hand side, so you can check that we can obtain blue or green synthetic OMX, same for gasoline, kerosene, diesel, or others. So well, so diesel-like fuels will still suffer for the same problems that diesel have. So it seems that we are going to uh, to produce high high NOx, high soot emissions. So they contain aromatics. Uh, so they are going to burn under high flame temperature. So gasoline-like fuels will tend to have rind run number and probably not too much benefits and emissions. So what about so other type of fuels that change in the composition can solve this type of problems. For instance, OMX. So well, uh, taking a look in the main characteristics of OMX. So as, as you probably know, so OMX is kind of blend. Uh, in fact, it's polyoxymethylene dimethyl ethers. So this is OMX. So and it's kind of blends of different OME. So OME3 up to OME5. So in uh, the bottom side, so uh, you can also check which is the uh, 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 chemical formulation that it has. And uh, well, I mean, the good thing that uh, we could say is, uh, well, here you have a, a, a table with the different uh, properties in terms of density, viscosity, set and number, lower heating value, etc., as well as the oxygen content for the OMX and also for the OME1. So well, OMX is presenting no carbon to carbon bonds. So I mean, no direct formation of soot precursors. So high molecular oxygen content. So this means fast oxidation process. So high reactive fuel compared um, with, with other conventional fuels that are used for compression emission engines. So it's diesel or dodecane. So just taking a look on, on the characteristics. So yeah, set a number. So it's it's something that uh, is, is highlighted here compared with diesel or OMX. Yeah, so for instance, OME1, so it's much, much lower. So and also, well, I mean, uh, in terms of viscosity, so later it's going to have a lot of, a lot of impact in terms of, of, of momentum flow. And uh, yeah, definitively the oxygen content that uh, OMX is coming. So it's also to use in terms of, of an advantage for, for the oxidation process. So, and one of the main drawbacks, so it's, it's the uh, lower heating value that it has, that is uh, kind of health if we compare it with diesel or with other, other uh, fields used in compressionation engines. Well, so as I have said, so one of the main challenges is the lower heating value, also its viscosity, as well as the durability in the fuel injection system. So, I mean, so it's an oxygenated fuel, so it's uh, something to be considered uh, in terms of uh, all the rubbers, et cetera, uh, that are in the uh, pumps, in high pressure pumps, or low pressure pumps, as well as in the uh, injectors itself. So, well, how to develop this uh, real application of OMX in internal combustion engines. So well, this, this is the uh, approach that uh, I would like to start to do. So all the work that is going to be presented here is something that we have 
develop uh, develop in CMT. So a part is uh, developed by myself, so other for uh, from my colleagues. Uh, so just having the way mix the idea, it's uh, why not? We can go a step by step, trying to understand what's up from the nozzle to the exhaust line when you have a real engine. No? So in order to do that, we start with our first stage that is related with pre or isolated spray characterization. So later in a second step, we move to in cylinder combustion properties understanding. So, and uh, yeah, third step is to go to something that is more realistic. So that is not related with optical engines. It's a kind of single cylinder metal engine or even a multi-cylinder engine. Yeah, and finally, so to provide the guidance in order to have a commercial development of this, of this field. Yeah, well, starting with free or isolated spray characterization, the main questions here are, which are the main differences in terms of uh, spray-related metrics? So how we can quantify this? So all the important thing is, how is the flame topology modified? And what's happening with suit formation when we are using this type of fuels? So, well, starting with that, so with this free spray characterization, so uh, we have uh, used an experimental setup that you can check here on the right hand side of the slide. So it's a high pressure, high temperature vessel. So it's uh, developed by also by, by CMT uh, team and it can provide an homogeneous uh, ambient condition of 150 bar and up to 1000 uh, Kelvin. So in this, uh, in this uh, rig, in this uh, vessel. So we have used, uh, as I have said, so we want to, to understand uh, perfectly under control thermodynamic conditions, how the behavior, how is the behavior of on a spray. So in order to do that, we use single hole injectors, which ones, those that are coming from the engine combustion network workshop. So it's uh, there you have also the link. So CMT, it's uh, quite well implied in this in these workshops. So, and uh, the test matrix that you are seeing in terms of density, oxygen variation, temperature, and injection pressure is coming from, from this uh, collaboration between different uh, institutions. So, which are the main uh, techniques that we have applied here uh, in terms of optical techniques for sure. So in terms of uh, evaluating the density gradients in the combustion chamber, so how, how they change, we use a high-speed Schlieren so, and then we can obtain penetration as well as ignition delay. In terms of uh, characterizing the spontaneous flame radiation, we use high speed broadband uh, radiation or high speed OH chemiluminescence. So by applying these techniques, we can obtain the thermal radiation in terms of temperature suit or the DIS flame penetration, the lift of length or the UV flame penetration. By applying lasers, for instance, laser induces fluorescence, we can obtain the spatial time resolved CH2O or OH, I mean the interference from radiation and the PAH. And finally, by using high speed diffusive back illumination, so that is based on the light absorption by liquid droplets and or soot particles, particles, sorry, we can obtain all liquid length or the spatial time resolved uh, suit. Yeah, in order to do that, so we have different type of uh, optical equipment. Uh, so with uh, photon, uh, different uh, high-speed cameras, as well as lasers, etc. Well, so the idea is just to compare this, uh, this free sprays. And uh, for that, we have diesel, dodecane, omex, only one. So uh, here in the left-hand side, so you can see one image in which we have an slidden uh, picture so just marking where is the lift of length as well as where is the penetration. So as you probably know, so penetration is a scale with the momentum flow and also with the density of the ambient. So here we have the temporal evolution for one case. In this case is 1,500 bar, 900 Kelvin and 50% of oxygen in the ambient. So you have the temporal evolution of different uh, macroscopic characteristics of the spray. On one hand side, so we have the penetration. So on the other, we have the lift of lengths and also in dusted vertical lines, we have the ignition delay. So we have in black color diesel, green color dodecane, blue color mix, and pink color OME1. So what we can say, so it's just uh, uh, seeing the, the, the videos. 
So we are just over, overlapping or overlapping. So it's leading together with the OH, which is in marketing red color and uh, in gray color. So you are seeing this leading, so I mean the vapor penetration. So it's quite clear that uh, we have completely different behaviors of, of, of the flames. So just uh, trying to uh, repeat the video. So uh, yeah, the ignition delays are really different overall for the OME one. This is well related with the theta number. So you can check that is blue, green, black. I mean, so we are we are having OMX ignition delay. So later the Dodecane, so quite close uh, to the diesel one. So I'm very far from that. Uh, so we have a more long ignition delay for the OME one. So as I have mentioned, so this is directly related with the set on number. So here you are going to see where and how it's auto igniting. And um, yeah, in terms of the penetration, we will say that, well, well, for sure. So this ignition delay is well related with uh, the lift of length. So where, uh, when we are having uh, this ignition delay in terms of of uh, of, uh, of uh, millimeters or length. So it's a scale. So we have uh, blue green. I mean, OMX or Dota came quite close among them. So later we have the the, the conventional diesel one, and later the OME one. And uh, yeah, so also considering the penetration, so we could say that up to we have an ignition delay. I mean, the auto ignition, the penetration of the different fuels are just following the same uh, the same line. So this is mainly related because it's is uh, yeah. So depending on the density and the momentum flow, and the momentum flow. In spite of changing the type of fuel, so the uh, momentum coefficient so uh, is not changing. I mean the area coefficient or the velocity coefficient. I mean the uh, when we multiply uh, the uh, squared uh, uh, velocity coefficient by the uh, area coefficient. So in the end, we are having a compensation among the uh, area as well as the velocity. So and on this area or this uh, region, so we are having a compensation of these two. Uh, Different characteristics because we have in the same penetration because the momentum flow so it's not parallel so and the density is not parallel but once we have auto ignition so for sure the temperature is changing in the chamber and therefore so the penetration is also changing so and for that we are seeing these differences but I mean so this is this is a first approach is just to say how is the oral effect field when we are evaluating it. And uh, continuing with this uh, with this pre spray characterization so we have. Our reactive spray metrics. So in the first approach, we have the lift of length. So previously I have just shown this uh, this figure for 900 Kelvin, but we have also made for experiments at 800 or 1000 Kelvin. So it's it's quite clear which is the trend when we are increasing the temperature as well as which is the scale that we have in the different fuels. So and we have also the ignition delay. So not only for the case that I have shown in the video previously, but also what's happening uh, when we decrease the temperature as well as when we increase. Yeah, something to be highlighted here is that the OME1, so it's not igniting at 800 Kelvins. And uh, yeah, so for sure we are not having uh, the lift of length as well as uh, we are not having neither the ignition delay. So we could say that we have quite similar trends in terms of the ignition delay and lift of length for the steady flame. So low viscosity and low set of number for the OEM is producing a very long time before the auto ignition. If the temperature is not high enough, the time delay is so long that the mixture conditions are too lean, and then they are out of flammability limits, and then we are not having this, this auto ignition process. And finally, uh, high set of number as well as low air fuel stoichiometric ratio for the OMX is prone to have an auto ignition that produce similar early combustion than diesel. So it's it's something that uh, can be also, how to say, stated for different uh, for different uh, uh, green, uh, how to say, black and, and blue color lines here. Just comparing those uh, those results. Well, in trying to finalize with this part of the free spray characterization, so the thing that we have here it's. Well, it's an LAF uh, for the OH and for the CH2O. So we have for the dodecane and we have also for OMX and OME1. So uh, in green color, so you are seeing here the CH2O and in red color, you are seeing the OH. So here we have the couple, both figures, but I mean, it's exactly the same idea. So, well, I mean, uh, what's happening in terms of the uh, premix or or diffusive combustion flame structure, especially for the OME one. 
So uh, the idea is when we compare, we could say that for diesel or for dodecane, so we have a diffusion frame front that is stabilized at rich lift of length. So when we go to OMX or OME1, so for OMX, we have a diffusive flame front stability also, but not with so rich. So here uh, it's not so rich as we compare with uh, dodecane uh, and uh, uh, at the lift of length. And if we go to OME1, so the thing that we say is that we have a fully premixed flame front that is completely lean at the lift of length. So yeah, and then which is the implication that we have with that in terms of suit production, well, I mean, so here you have the KEL coming from the DVI, and uh, you can check that for OMX or for OME1, so we are not detecting nothing in terms of the signal of the light. So this means that we are not recording at all suit. So we are not having presence of suit by comparing with uh, the ones that we have with the other king. So it's, it's uh, absolutely negligible. Okay, so this is the uh, difference in terms of the flame topology that we can obtain from an isolated spray by using Dodecane OMX or OME1. Well, and here the thing that we have, it's <clears throat> a comparison among OH and uh, that is showing uh, absolutely different flame for oxygenated fuels. So, so one again, we have a picture that is for diesel uh, Dodecane OMX or OME1. So the thing that we could say is, uh, well, if we compare diesel Dodecane OMX or OME1, so we could say that for diesel, for dodecane here, we have the uh, stoichiometric region just marked with this dotted white line as well as the lift of length. So we could say that we have medium intensity sown at the lift of length, so maximum intensity at the flame tip. So this is related with the red color that we have. So here it's more weak, the red color, and here we have more dense red color. So what's, what's the implication of that? So is that when we have high suit, so we are, how to say, hiding the OH that later, for instance, in the optical lens we are going to show to you. So we have kind of separation between the lift of length and the reaction front. So, and uh, this is something that is happened for this type of fields later for the OMX. So here is the, uh, how to say, the, uh, the idea of the uh, lower AF, uh, lower AF field stoichiometric ratio. So in the end, so we have a, a region that is closer to the to the nozzle, closer to the lift of length, and uh, so we have high intensity at the lift of length, as you can as you can realize, and lowest lowest intensity uh, farther down a stream. So it's much uh, how to say here the red is more intense than later, and for the OME, so we have only high intensity at the lift of length and almost no intensity farther from from that, so or downstream for that. Okay, so here I have just marked with a question mark. So because yeah, to have a clear region like in the other fields in terms of a stoichiometric region, so it's not so easy because here it's completely for mix. So and this is something that I think that needs to be highlighted. Well, so continuing, once we have made some uh, comments in terms of, of of key points for isolated sprays or its characterization. So next steps is to go to more realistic uh, conditions. So such realistic conditions will be uh, implemented and, uh, and uh, how to say, studied in optical engines. So, and uh, the questions that are related with that is how does OMX combustion propagate within a cylinder in which we have uh, multi-hole nozzles, in which we have real bowl shapes and how is the combustion propagation uh, modified with respect to the diesel? So when we compare with diesel, so when we have OMX, which are the main differences that we are seeing overall considering the interaction among the different sprays as, as well as the wall spray interaction. And our diesel OMX blends kind of a good trade-off. So it's something that we can use. Well, here uh, we have the experimental setup that uh, we have used in order to, to answer those questions. So this is an optical single cylinder uh, engine based on 1.6 GM engine. So it's something that is completely developed at, at CMT. So we have um, obtained the experience in the past years in order to develop our own optical engines in different sizes. So this, this one is the smallest one. So that we have also other medium duty and also heavy duty optical engines in which as you can realize here, we can visualize by the bottom side as well as for the side with different windows. 
So here you have a real bowl shape. So uh, completely made in quartz. Uh, so in fact, it's a reentrant bowl shape as, as, you can, as you can check. And uh, the different techniques that we have applied here are natural luminosity, OH luminescence, chemiluminescence, sorry, and two color pinometry. So two color pinometry for evaluating temperature in KL. So uh, on, the, on the right hand side, so you check which is the uh, setup, the optical setup in which we have the intensified cameras and the two uh, core uh, method uh, high speed cameras, one of them for 660 nanometers and the other for 550 nanometers, as well as the different uh, optical devices such as beam splitters or decroitic uh, for uh, how to say, having parts of the light for the uh, OH intensified camera. So uh, the fields that we are going to compare so are exactly the same. So it's this OMX, but also in this case is Fisher drops. And as I have mentioned, so we are going to use or I have used uh, a stock multi-hole nozzle with a real injection strategy in different engine loads. So in this case, I'm going to show you a uh, uh, four injection strategy with two pilots, one main injection and one post injection in order to arrive up to 7.5 bar IMP. So uh, taking, uh, taking pictures of that, so we can see uh, the natural luminosity. So from the top to the, to the bottom, so we have uh, fossil diesel, so we have Fisher top diesel and we have OMX. So here you have uh, a temporal evolution of, of uh, pictures, of different pictures of, 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 of these uh, three different fields in which, uh, uh, so we have, uh, how to say, different uh, intensities registers. So here we have, uh, we have arrived up to 2,500, so here up to 400. So take, take on that uh, in consideration since you are seeing kind of same light, but it's not meaning the same. So just when you make the accumulation of that intensity, a temporal evolution of that accumulated intensity, so you can check what's up with black as well as with red color, that means diesel and, and, and fissure drop diesel. So you can check that this fissure drop diesel so is prone to have less light or less blood band intensity. So and when you check for OMX, so it's, it's drastically lower. So we have, or we could say weak, but not null natural luminosity for the OMX. So later by applying uh, this two color uh, pedometry, so there we have uh, the same fields. So uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, temporal evolution for sure, because uh, it's needed to, to be characterized in different crank angle degrees than the natural luminosity. But what is quite clear too is that, so the intensity of the natural, uh, of, the, of, of the KEL that we are registering here, and here you have the quantification of that KEL is quite different when we compare uh, fissure drops and, uh, and, and, and fossil fuel diesel that it's completely negligible. So when you go to uh, the case of OMX, so we are not registering KEL in this case. And uh, we have the final thing that is the OH, um, and that is the OH chemiluminescence. So once again, for the three different fields with different color bars. So, and you can realize something that is quite interesting is the amount of, of OH that we are seeing for the OMX that we are not seeing for the rest. And why is that? So, well, I mean, here uh, it's kind of explanation. So we have very strong OH signals for the OMX and we don't have suit. So this means that this intense OH signal is trapped by the suit. And this is happening something in the diesel and also in the fissure drops. In fact, it's something that I also see uh, when we have, I have shown to you uh, the spray uh, evolution in the red color uh, for the diesel and also for the uh, for the uh, for the OMX in an isolated spray, so you can check how this OH in red, so it's appearing and disappearing depending on the soot concentration that we have in the isolated sprays. But here, so it's not isolated. So here it's a multi-hole uh, nozzle with interactions with the wall and also among the sprays, and we have exactly the same the same fact. So we have exactly the same uh, idea. So something to think about is. Natural luminosity when OHMH is mean the same for, for different fields. So the answer is, is, is not, okay? So it's something also to, to highlight. Well, so uh, the idea now it's how can diesel proportion affect the combustion of, of OMX diesel blend? So, I mean, to use directly OMX, it's, it's a really nice um, or it's interesting 
uh, way in order to try to, to reduce uh, uh, CO2 in terms of well to wheel as well as to have no soot and try to increase the EGR in order to have uh, very low NOx. But uh, there appears the lower heating value, like a challenge. So, and then nozzles needs to be rearranged with the bigger nozzles. So, this is not a problem. But the idea is what's up if uh, we goes to uh, if we goes to blends of OMX uh, diesel. So, well, the experimental setup here is it's quite similar to the previous one. So, but the different is uh, we have used. Uh, we have used a flat piston with a flat uh, cylindrical bowl. So just, just for understanding, uh, it's not a real bowl shape. And uh, the experimental techniques that we have used uh, here, so it's, uh, well, here you can realize a cross section of what could be uh, the, uh, the bottom side of, of the engine. So, and here you have, you can check that we have used a high speed CMOS spectroscopy uh, so later we use an intensifier, the Hamamatsu intensifier. Later we have the spectrograph. We have the UV this uh, lens, and we have also a higher speed natural luminosity uh, camera. So with that, so the thing that we have made is, uh, as you know, the, spectros the spectrograph. So we can decide exactly in which region we want to have it. So we have just half the uh, the. Um, we have this, uh, we have just uh, half the, uh, the, the, the the bottom view of, of the of the image, and uh, with that, so we have also compared again diesel, OMX, and different blends of OMX and diesel. So uh, the thing that we have made is pure OMX, pure diesel, and later 90-10 up to 50-50 uh, uh, diesel OMX. So we have used again uh, the same type of uh, of uh, real. Uh, Real pattern of injection, so with uh, how to say uh, 9.2 bar of IMEP and constant CA50. So we have maintained in order to do the experiments the same CA50, the same IMEP. So here you have uh, the uh, high speed spectros spectroscopy, sorry, from uh, the left uh, high corner up to uh, just the opposite. So we have pure uh, OMEX. 90, 10, 90 OMX, 10 diesel, and uh, 80, uh, 20, and so on. So here we have the pure diesel, here we have the pure OMX, and between of them, so we have the different blends. So it's interesting that on the horizontal axis, we have the wavelength, so different wavelengths in which light is decomposed. So and later in the vertical axis, so we have the crank angle degree. So the thing that we have made is just for each uh, one of these regions, so we have evaluated, which is temporally uh, the uh, uh, image that we are obtaining from the spectrograph. So and we have make this type of maps, just adding for each one of the crank angle degrees the different uh, uh, the different images that we are obtaining, and with that we can create this type this type of of maps. So later we have in red color the post injection. So and in the yellow color we have the main injection or where the main injection is in terms of the temporal evolution. So here you have the luminosity intensity in arbitrary units. So we are checking how is the spectra at 10 crank angle degrees that more or less is at this dusted red line. And the thing that, uh, that we can say, so on the right hand side, you have the KL factor evolution. So, and the things that we can, uh, that we can say, so it's well. So we have uh, diesel in black color. So in blue color, we have the uh, OMEX, the pure OMEX. And between them, we have all the blends. All the blends are well scaled, not only in the luminosity intensity, but also in the KL. So the thing that we can say is where is the OH, where is the HCO, and where is the suit. And the thing that we can uh, state here is that the OMX, the pure OMX, is forming kind of constant spectrum for the OH and HCO. So this means that this, this line of this spectra, depending on, on, depending on the wavelength, we have a constant line of the uh, luminosity intensity. So this addition is producing soot. So I mean, just ahead of you for, for black radiation. So I mean, we are increasing the amount of soot. So it's also quite clear here, that we are comparing the KL. And uh, I mean, the soot production from the main and post injection pulses can be identified from something like 80% of MX and 20% of diesel. So this means that uh, beyond that, uh, I mean, 70, 30, so you are going to start to see uh, suit again uh, and uh, something like 80, uh, 20 could be how to say the, the threshold in which you are seeing 
or not seeing in this suit. Well, so in this case, in which we are seeing more and more suit, so we could say that OH, so radiation is pulling mass by suit that uh, it's coming for the diesel, okay? And uh, well, something that uh, needs also to be uh, to be evaluated is that what's going to happen when we try to increase more and more and more. So the, uh, the injection timing, or let me say not the injection timing, the adjacent timing in order to compensate the lower heating value. So, I mean, this, this means that in the end, so the idea of producing a uh, suit because we are adding OMX, so it's going to be uh, canceled in some way because we are increasing more and more the duration of our injection process and therefore the duration of our combustion process too. So, well, this, these are the main outcomes coming from, from, uh, from the insulinder uh, combustion properties uh, of different blends. And just uh, once we have seen all these ideas coming from, from the optical engines, so we can jump to the, to the next step. So the next step, it's the engine performance and emissions optimization and calibration. So uh, the idea here is, can we mitigate regulated emissions? Will this affect the fuel consumption? Well, so how we have studied that, uh, here we have a, a complete instrumented uh, uh, test cell for a single cylinder engine. In this case, it's an above 25. So it's 1.25 liter per cylinder. And well, we have modified the production energy in order to create a single cylinder engine. So it's quite easy, just trying to compensate the inertia forces and changing the flywheel, adding weight, as well as to, to uh, how to say, a splitting or let me say making independent, so the, uh, uh, the different ducts, so the, uh, the, the intake as well as the exhaust uh, ducts and having an external EGR control. So in this case, it can be low high pressure EGR. So and for sure, we are going to measure the uh, different emissions that we have in the exhaust with the state of the art Oliva um, measurements and also the inside under pressure. So the engine that we have, it's it's a kind of, of fuel ratio of 1.8 with a compression ratio totally in the state of the art for compression engine engines right now. And uh, well, so it's the unique thing that we have made here is to change the, the stock uh, the stock nozzles for a high flow uh, nozzle. So it's kind of almost, it's not the total, but uh, how to say it's, it's more big than the one or bigger than the one that we have in the stock. So it's 200, uh, 2000 cc's compared with 1,300 cc's. So what I mean, uh, what we have made, so it's a sweep of lambda, maintaining a single injection strategy and trying to optimize the injection timing uh, for the minimum fuel consumption. So if, uh, if we do that for the single sign range, so here you have a couple of examples. So one of them is for 25% and the other is for 75% uh, of load. So both of them have 1,800 RPM. So the thing that we have made is uh, in terms of emissions, so we have the measurement divided or normalized by the Euro 6 limits in terms of fuel consumption. So the equivalent one is the ones that we have used is the fuel consumption scaled by uh, the uh, ratio between the lower heating value of the OMEX and the diesel. So you have different colors. So these colors are related with NOx, soot, CO, and environmental of carbons. So, and later in red color, so here you can realize, so the sweep of the different lambdas that we have for the fuel consumption as well as for the year. So, and as I have mentioned, so we have made all that not only for 25% load, but also for high load. So what, what is observed here is that independently on the load, so we are obtaining a region, so it is, is, is marked here in, in, uh, in gray color, in which we have very low emissions with uh, an interesting result in terms of fuel consumption compared with diesel one. So this is not only a light load, but also at, at high load. And we could say that all the emissions are almost below Euro 6 without a kind of super or exhaustive injection optimization. It's, it's kind of only a sweep of lambda and a sweep of injection timings. So with a, a, an only single uh, single injection strategy. So that means that we have a very uh, high possibilities or we have room in order to try to improve that uh, resource, okay? So, and uh, the thing, the good thing that we have here, so is that we can also check that in this region, we are going to have kind of five grams per kilowatt hour less in terms of fuel equivalent fuel consumption or equivalent fuel consumption for this high load. So why we have that? So this is mainly related with the fact that we have a gross indicator efficiency that is 
depending on the case, among one and three percent uh, greater uh, due to lower heat use values because we are having an improvement in burning rates. So this is this is something uh, quite interesting by direct use of 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 uh, you know real engine methyl engine just measuring uh, with uh, completely uh, OMX. I mean uh, without any type of plants, just just directly. So the challenge here it's uh, probably if you have to take a look in uh, in the AJ, <coughs> sorry in the year rates. So you you are going to check that uh, we are asking for. Um, kind of 55% uh, a year or something like 50% a year when we are in high load. So uh, this means that, uh, yeah, so we need to uh, make a lot of efforts in terms of air management, not only in the in the year group, but also in the turbocharger that we are going to use. So, well, this is for single solid engine. So in the idea it's, well, the total fuel consumption is kind of a limitation and uh, autonomy what's up if we goes to a dual fuel system in order to try to compensate this lower heating body. Well, so this is a concept that we have been working for for more than eight years. It's, it's main dual mode, dual fuel combustion. So it's kind of our CCI combustion type in which uh, we have a port fuel injector that is in, in it's it's including the low reactivity fuel in the chamber uh, by the port. So unless we have a high reactivity fuel, so in this case it's, it's named their diesel, but for sure in our case it's going to be OMX. And uh, well, uh, on the uh, bottom side, so you are seeing fully premix uh, combustion, that is this, this part of the engine map in which we are obtaining this type of fully premix or CCI. So here you are seeing CFD calculations in which we have seen the both peninsulas, the Sud one and the Nox one. And you can see how the local equivalence ratio is not touching any one of those peninsulas. So we are not having any type of, of not of suit when we are in fully premised conditions. So if we move on, so, and we move to this other region, so up to high load, so you can see that uh, uh, we have a high premix RCCI, but it's not uh, a fully premix RCCI. So this means that, uh, yeah, in some cases, so we are uh, touching uh, or approaching, so this this suit formation, so with different um, with different uh, ratios, or let me say equivalence ratios and temperature, and finally, so we move to this dual fuel diffusion, uh, so that is marked in red core for the for the injection injection time and injection type that is quite different, and for sure, so in these cases, so we are arriving to the full load, that uh, we are arriving with a penalty in terms of suit and max. Okay, so this is kind of of a strategy, and uh, and well. Uh, how we have approached this. So we have used a, a serial engine, so it's a Polvo ND8. So uh, the things that we have made is, is to change, or let me say not change, but include uh, six PFIs. So we have also include a low pressure year loop, and we have modified the uh, the pistons, so the ball shape. So we have gone to a non-reentrant, ground reentrant, a back tube uh, uh, piston with a reduced compression ratio. And uh, in terms of the numerical setup, so the thing that we have made, so it's different track models, so with different powers, uh, using a CLD vehicle modeling. So we have also evaluated this rule vehicle uh, model in different validations. So you can check independently on the uh, type of engine that uh, the track is using, 280 horsepower or 320 horsepower. So you can say that uh, the uh, this is this is made in road. So I mean, it's, it's not in, in the cell in the lab, so it is made in road. So the difference in terms of fuel consumption so are are quite quite small. And uh, yeah, so we have made different driving cycles, so the emulation one, but not only that. So three different type of 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 uh, of, uh, of cycles, such as uh, urban hilly, local hilly, or regional flat. So having that, so here the thing that we have it's the OMX gasoline calibration results uh, for for Eurosex. And then, uh, so we have used the high reactivity fuel, it's OMAX, the low reactivity one is gasoline, the year it's both high pressure, low pressure, later the target that we have used, it's Euro 6. So from the left to the right, so you have a map, a complete map in which you have fuel consumption, uh, equivalent fuel consumption. So you have the NOx, you have the soot. So the gasoline fraction, the high and of carbons, well, I mean, uh, gasoline fraction, so it's, it's related with the fact of how many uh, of, of the blend is coming from the omics or coming from the gasoline. So then later we have also a CO. So in terms of the remarks, we could say that, well, when we compare with uh, OMX gasoline and uh, OMX gasoline minus uh, the ones that we have with conventional diesel combustion, we could say that 
we have a strong benefit in terms of the amount of, of, of efficiency that we are improving. It's not a, uh, indicate efficiency, it's break a, sp a specific one. So I think this is this is really important to remark that uh, half of the of, of the map, so it's it's improving the, the efficiency. So we have uh, any out NOx emissions that are reduced by uh, or under Euro six limits in the wall in the map. So that that's also quite quite interesting one. And uh, we have virtually zero suit emissions in the wall in the map. So I mean it's great color, so it's just implied this zero emissions. So later, like a drawback, uh, so it's um, you're having quite high humber or carbons or CO that uh, if you compare it with uh, conventional diesel combustion, for sure, they are order uh, of magnitude bigger or, or, or higher. And uh, well, uh, what's happening if we use on a stock VOC, so we can deal with them or not. So the, the answer is yes. So I have not included all the study here in the presentation, but we have different papers that can uh, that you can check and, and demonstrate that 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 that, uh, that idea. What's up when we compare uh, on driving cycles, different platforms of tracks. So in this case it's 280 horsepower under uh, WHBC in 50% payload. So having this 18 tons. So uh, we have uh, the different values for uh, the conventional diesel combustion. So in uh, we have different colors here in terms of Euro 6 limit, Euro 7 limit, what, what is supposed to be Euro 7 limit. So uh, 2025 CO2 targets as well as blue, dark. So we have 2030 CO2 targets. So uh, for this type of operation of OMX with gasoline, so we are reducing the fuel consumption uh, in a four percent. So we are uh, reducing so the NOx by 90 percent. So the soot around 100. So I mean we are reducing drastically. And in terms of well to wheel by using OMX, so we are reducing up to something like 50 percent or 50, 55, 56 percent. So we are also uh, fulfilling the target for 2030. So what's up with the other platform in which we have 350 horsepower with 25 tons. So we are also increasing, uh, let me say, uh, the benefit in terms of efficiency. So and then we have a lower uh, fuel consumption. So we have the same benefit in terms of maximum suit and lowest benefit uh, in terms of, or lower benefit if we compare it with the other track with 280 horsepower. So because here we are not achieving, so the CO2 reduction of, of, of uh, of <laughs> how to say uh, 2030, so we have only the 2025 uh, relaxation of CO2, just considering the well to be. So yeah, so here you can check uh, that it's, it's absolutely or dramatically or drastically uh, high the amount of of of, uh, of CO in the manner of carbons that we are doing. So what's up if we uh, if we install the EOC? So well, the thing that you can realize is that we are fulfilling EOC limits. Unfortunately, we are uh, far from uh, the thing that you have uh, when this DOC is used with a conventional diesel combustion, but in any case, so we are fulfilling this Euro 6. Well, so here you have uh, kind of, of main ideas that I have been reflecting in, in my talk uh, related with these uh, driving cycles coming by the use of dual fuel by using OMX in gasoline. And uh, yeah, so just for, for finishing, because I think that uh, more or less I'm on time, so the idea is uh, which are the main conclusions that I would like that you have from my talk. It's, well, so we have gone from something that is quite uh, well controlled. So it's isolated sprays and we have arrived up to, uh, from the nozzle up to the emissions in a real engine. So we could say that from this previous part, the leasing and auto emission properties of the remix are quite similar to the ones of diesel under free and isolated spray conditions. I mean one, it's presenting kind of difficulties for lower temperatures conditions. So oxygenated fuels present a very rapid com combustion. So reaching stoichiometric conditions easier than uh, conventional non-oxygenated fuels. No suit formation was observed for OMX or for OME1. The same properties can be uh, extended or let's say studied in the in-cylinder engine conditions. So we have an, an optimization of OMX. Sorry. We have made an appreciation of OMX for conventional diesel combustion. So in here, so you can check exactly which are the main highlights. And finally, so we have also uh, do that for a kind of dual fuel system in order to compensate these, these limitations. And with that, so I close my, my, my talk.
Well, thank you so much for the wonderful talk. I can say that it's really a sy sy systematic, you know, you have done er everything about this fuel from the fundamental combustion property, like in spray and in cylinder and also engine and also this, this engine vehicle system study. So it's very uh, impressive. We do have a few questions from the mm -hmm. audience uh, in the chat. I think the first, first question is from actually from me, because I think a very important research direction in fuel is to try to direct, to try to derive structure property relationship. So I was wondering what's the flexibility to adjust the spray and combustion behavior by varying the lens, the chain lens in your omics, mm -hmm. basically varying the X. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really nice question, uh, Peng. The idea it's uh, as you, you have you have seen with the videos as well as with the images. So uh, if you vary the uh, X of the OMX, <laughs> so you can jump from something like uh, OME1 to something like OME5 or something like that. So the good thing that uh, we have covered uh, all the range in terms of saying, okay, so we have studied the OME1 that could be like a reference of having low theta number so, and then higher ignition delay. So kind of premix flame in the lift off. So uh, very high intensity of the OH there. So, and then you go to the other or the opposite way that will really have a lot of OME5 that is more related with having a high OMX uh, in your blend, let me say, if I can say blend for the OMX. So in which you have uh, other type of, 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 of lift of length, other type of, of spray characteristics of the complete flame. So the structure is, is completely different as I have shown in the talk. Yeah, which is the flexibility to adjust the spray and combustion behavior by varying the OMX. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really interesting because when you buy OMX, so they are saying this is OMX and probably uh, one part of, if you try to compare it, something that it has happened to me. So if you buy OMX, so, and then later you, you do that and later, six months later, you do exactly the same purchase to the same uh, company. Unfortunately, they are not selling to you exactly the same. And unfortunately, so it's quite difficult to try to fit everything in the same place because, so you are having different proportions of OME3, OME5. So, and then as, as we have seen, so our, our set of number is going to be different. And then, so all that is derived from that. So it's going to be quite different. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a problem, uh, the thing that you are highlighting. Okay, thank you. you are so the second, the second question is from uh, three RAM Popery. This question is trying to understand this better, why we're using omics, why not dimensional ether? <laughs> what, has the, what, are, what are the benefits over dimensional ether for omics? Yeah, well, I mean, so from uh, from a scientific or a scientific point or technical point of view, so I think that uh, there are no big difference. So I mean, they are quite similar molecules. So, but uh, the amount of oxygen that we are having from OMX is quite different or is different. And uh, therefore, so we have also different type of aggressivity, aggressivity uh, or corrosion in all the fuel injection systems. So this means that uh, it, it's quite uh, quite interesting to try to avoid that. I always say that OMX is a fantastic fuel uh, in order to be in cylinder. The problems are from the tank to the cylinder and just when you have from the exhaust to the catalyzers. So uh, the idea with the DME, it's, it's even worse. So for that, uh, so we have gone to OMX. Okay, great. So the third question is from uh, So Young. Uh, the question is, I'm wondering whether low city number is a key issue to use e-fuel in IC engines. If so, will ignition assistance or active control will help? So the next, sorry, the next, the next question is, is from Jay Gore. Is that correct? Uh, it's from So Young. Uh, okay. The question is, is wondering whether low city number is a key yeah, issue? Yeah, I think uh, Professor... Uh... Garcia Martinez, I uh, addressed the question only to you. I did not. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Available okay. everything. Okay, no problem. Okay. Yeah, you, you can you can address the the, the question from uh, Professor Gore. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. No, is that because I'm I'm just uh, looking at at the question, so and say okay, maybe maybe Peng, uh, uh, 
Okay, so uh, well, the first question from Jay, uh, uh, Professor Gore, is uh, what are the archival uh, journal publications documenting these results? Of course, we see many international and European conference publications sitting on the slides. So, well, I mean, uh, I have not included in the in the end, but um, just uh, if you click on my ORCID, uh, on my ORCID uh, uh, number that maybe I can I can just directly put here in the chat. You can check all these uh, all these uh, publications in different journals, and uh, they are ranging from uh, how to say uh, from applied energy to uh, combustion flames. So I mean, uh, there are different uh, different type of, of of journals, and yeah, so also in different in different uh, conferences. Thank and, you so much for the arcade number. Yeah, yeah, and uh, on your hand, so it seems uh, uh, other question from your side, uh, Gore. Uh, for seems to be funded research for OMX. Have they released any with OMX in their fleet? Uh, well, I'm not aware about uh, that Ford was was using it. So here in uh, in Europe, the thing that we can say is that in German companies they are using OMX, and uh, also part of the France companies they are using uh, OMX, and uh, right now they are not using in their fleets. So it's it's only kind of approach for the. Uh, I mean, for demonstrators or other type, or this type of things. Right. So the next question is from So Young. Uh, he's, he's asking whether low city number is a key issue to use e fuel in IC engines. If so, will ignition assistance or active control will help? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, if uh, if you want to use kind of of process of combustion super premix. It's, it's more than welcome, but in the case that you want to use a defossive combustion process, it's not welcome at all. So it's uh, uh, because uh, the idea that you want is just to inject and they have the auto emission process as, as fast as you can. So uh, th this is the main question. So this is why it's, it's a, key, a key issue to have any fuel uh, with a low set and low set and fuel if you want to use in a defossive combustion process. That's right. So the next question is, from uh, your luck back. Uh, do you experience any phase separation in omix diesel blends, especially at high omix content? No, not at all. So it's uh, the, the problem uh, we have experienced with OMX and gasoline. So trying to, to blend them, uh, we have had a lot of problems of the stratification, but not with omix and diesel. Great. So the next question is from Professor Tiergang Fong. Have you measured the two color flame temperature in optical engines? Is the temperature higher for Omi-1 Omix than diesel? Thanks. Yeah, so, well, we have uh, we have measured the, the KL as well as, as the temperature with the two color methods for sure. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, the idea it's, uh, the temperature that we are obtaining, so it's higher for the OMX so I mean one compared with the diesel one, and we are obtaining less less KL. Yeah. Yeah. So the next question is from Orkin. Did you observe any injector nozzle anom an anomalies in terms of spray or nozzle material uh, deterioration with OMIX use, or do you have any future concern in terms of injector durability? Yeah, so I mean, as I have as I have mentioned before, so the fuel injection system, so it, it's a, a it's a real problem when you are using OMX, and uh, and in terms of the nozzle material by itself, I have not seen any type of uh, deterioration. What I can say is that uh, the high pressure pump. So if it's um, how to say if it's oil lubricated, uh, not, but if in the case that it's still lubricated, you are going to have a lot of problems. So, because you have the oxidation of all, how to say, the rubber material, etc. So, and then you're going to start with leakages. So, and later you are going to, to break the, 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 the pump, the high pressure pump. So, with the injectors, to be honest, uh, so it's, it's, it's something that has happened, but more problems in the needle uh, that, not in the, uh, not, that not in the nozzle by itself. And also, so considering that you need to have a very large generalizing time. So in the end, you have problems in the coil, depending on the type of injector that you are using, but you can have problems in the coil. That's great. Thank you so much for answering all the questions. Well, I think, I think your research really provide a feasible uh, alternative path for the development of alternative fuel and IC engines 
uh, even in the current trend of decarbonization and electrification. So uh, I really appreciate your work and presentation. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a pleasure for me. So just so, just one one last note. I have I have uh, for Professor Gore. So I have well for for everyone. I have put in the chat so my ORFID number. So there you can check uh, all the publications, etc. That's great. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. So with that, I would like to thank everybody and uh, for attending today's seminar. And um, maybe all the all the panelists can turn on the camera and we say hi to each other before Thanksgiving holiday. <laughs>